morning. This shirt's just about had it. Look at it. Look, look at it, look at it. Don't look away. It's awful. Yeah, what the hell, you know? Alrighty, well, I know this, you probably, how many people are gonna wanna look at my videos? I do really, really weird stuff that you'll probably never do. You might do it, but I mean, how often do you need your own tapping machine, right? With, with just all hand-built switches and I don't know. How often do you need a tire turned into a metal finishing machine? <laughs> Which is actually pretty damn cool. I'm mainly, I like the thrust bearing, which I don't even see it or not. There's a thrust bearing back there that I built from scratch. That allows me to, to take this tire completely off of here. It's got a drive system. I can just pull the tire off right now, except it's heavy. Um, I got other crap laying around here. Today I have got a xylophone. Now I went upstairs and I catted out a bit of my plans. Everything here has been catted out. As usual, my program, I don't know, I guess I need to set the margins, but I'm just used to it, so I'll just draw in my numbers. Anyway, that is, that is just roughly the measurements that I need today because I'm putting these pieces together. And by the way, these have been water jetted. I could, you know, times past, I've cut pieces out like this but it's nice to have them cut out. It just, it's just pretty nice. Although, I'll have to modify these pieces. As you can see there, they're a bit, that's a bit long. My resonator tubes, which are sure a whole lot easier to work with when they're not, when they're not um, attached to the harp. So that is quite a bit, that's just nice. You know, that line is, is a pretty nice line. There's a decent machine shop down in in Texas that, that does all this work for these xylophones. So um, they do a nice job. Thank you guys. If you ever watch this video, I appreciate your good work. I had this out. I went ahead. I don't like putting too many sharp corners on on these pieces because I figure there's a sharp corner. This seems like it's a good place for a crack to start. So everything here. Has, has got smooth corners, which means that with this piece, I'm going to take my grinder and I'm just going to fit these pieces so that they they will, you know, they'll lock in. And of course, once I have that done, then I'll go ahead and I'll adjust my cut. Just kind of laying some lines out so that when I do my grinding, I have just a little bit of a reference. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, this is all going to get welded, but it's nice to have, it's nice to not, I don't know, it's nice to not make a huge mess. So I've got this. And what I'll do is I'll come in here and puddle this and swirl this and I'll, I'll do a little bit of a weld here. It won't go down that far. Put them up into little facets, you know, that way I can see. So I, I always have, for the most part, I have a parallel line to work with. But, so yeah, you can see how I've done that. I just, just sort of split the difference. It's going to get welded down here, maybe. I haven't decided whether I want to weld it. I don't need to. If I'm just really particular, I will. I don't really like the way that looks. I like that better. But still, that's going to work fine. Um, and I'll probably weld. I don't know. Anyway, there's my first job. 
do it. I probably read my dial caliper every day. I love it. It's a Mitu Toyo, and it's really good. But I read this thing every day, right? Yet, I, I let me just show you something here. Um, okay. I have some measurements here. 2.28 and 2.22. You can see that I've got a mark here, and i got a mark here, B and S, big and small, big and small, big, small. Anyway, so I made this mark. Well, if it's 2.22, it's going to be a little under a quarter. If it's 2.28, it's going to be a little over a quarter. Look at that. That's 2.2, 2.022. .2, 2. <laughs> okay. Well, let me look at this one. Telling on myself here. That's 2.02, something even a little bit less. If you've never read a caliper, if you've never used one of these, they're not that tough to use, so I hear. Apparently, I can't use them <laughs> properly. Okay, here we go. So it's 2.28. So here we go. This is the inches, tenth of, tenths of inches. So if I roll this out two tenths, that's my my two eight. That would be the two that I'm speaking of. Okay, this is millimeters up here. We're not we're not going to worry about millimeters because we are not in Europe or Canada. Canada are they metric system? England? You guys use you guys use um, some metric system and some standard measurements, I guess. Anyway, so okay, there you are. I'm zeroed out on my gauge. Okay, I want to roll this up to two inches. So I go all the way to 1, all the way to 2. Now, if I want to do my 2, I go 1, 2. There's my 2.2 .2 inches, okay? That's 2.2 .2 inches right there. There's my dial indicator setting on 200, actually. Well, if I want to go 2.28, I'm going to go all the way here because my next digit is 8. So 2.28. Let's see how good I did. I hope you can see that. This is 2.28. 2.28 is my short side. This is my short side. So let's see just how good I did. Oh, look at that. I'm off by over a quarter of an inch. And what I did was instead of paying attention, I rolled out to my two. And I just do this. This is, you know, for me, this is morning, and I always do dumb crap in the morning. So I went two, and then I went two, and can you see that? An eight. That's what I did. Now, that's actually 028, what I've just done. But, and it's a big difference between, like, that's beautiful and wrong, um, and 28, which is, again, right there. So, I do double check my measurements all the time because it's so easy to mess up, you know. Getting ready to do some welding finally. Got the welder out. This is what I use. This is a rig I used to just hold my, my pieces in place. It's kind of nice. This is just a little hydraulic pump. Really cool. Um, this came from a jet engine test stand eBay purchase. I got three or four of them. I liked them so much. And then this is just a little hydraulic cylinder that I've mounted on here. It just works pretty nice. I've got a little, obviously a little wedge. I don't know, to work up my way all the way down to here to hold this thing relatively square and level. So that's where I want it. All right. I'll go ahead and give it, a, give it a shot here. Not only is it going to lean on me, but if I put a big fat fillet on either side of this, it's going to make that, that um, it's going to put a belly in this nice flat plate. It's just welding. Welding is cool, but man, it, does, it really messes with metal.
you stick my tungsten into the pool, a big bunch of black crap, and that's really annoying as hell. I do that a lot. I was welding, I guess, wrong handed when I did it. But I do it a lot, so it's just one of those things you do. Got it set up, squared up, had to build just a fill together something that would hold this so you see that grabs that and then I put a screw in here so I'm blocking that down works okay and I know I'm okay because I can wiggle this one a little bit uh, I can wiggle this one a little bit but they but they both are being pinned down so I know that my level is pretty good and it looks like my lines are nice so let's give it a shot Okay, I'll try it again. I think it might have something to do with my, my cup breaking. I did have a new one, so there we go. Nice and pretty. I didn't dip it, so... Oh, weird. You know, and it got cleaner. I'm wondering if maybe it isn't the um, maybe it isn't the, the welding rod that I'm using to hold that up. That's the 5356, I think. Here's my bending rig. Believe it's a 50 ton jack. You notice I'm just using leverage here. Uh, these these vice grips don't have the power to hold that back. But what I can do. Just put pressure on it and take my little engineer's hammer and beat the hell out of it and that gives me gives me the ability to um, straighten it out so I think we're good on this one I have one more to go okay I think I got her you notice I got pretty good leverage going on here that's helpful So. <clears throat> these welds by the way I did with my little MIG welder and it took me like four hours to do or I don't know some extra extraordinarily long time to do those welds issue with my vice grips. Oh yeah, I got it. So, a little bit wonky. That was perfect. Oh hell, I don't know. Maybe I'll go ahead and give it a Maybe I'll go ahead and do it. I cut a lot of blood pressure on that. So. For some reason, it tells me when I'm good when this one falls off. Yeah, we definitely got it. That one looks really good. So, happy with that. Happy with that. And you know, before I weld these on, just because it will make them harder to get to. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grind all that, make these, make these a smooth, pretty fillet, get them clean. I'd rather not, but I, if, if I don't do it now, yeah, it's going to suck. I'll have to fight to work around the structure to, to get the um, grinder in there. So I'm just going to do it now and call it good. 
So I just stuck it on top, used a little bit of, uh, of the rod, and just melted it together a little bit. So I'll grind that down, and it'll be it'll be, it'll be nice. It'll be you know relatively pretty. So here's how it works. When the camera's on, I can't do a good weld. But when I turn the camera off, I can do a better weld. Not a great weld. I still have some dirty spots over here. But there you go. Alrighty. So take your pick. Yicky. Then they're still good welds. Pretty. Beautiful. Very nice. So so. Pretty good. And icky again. Now none of these welds are going to get seen, and if I need to clean them up, I will. They're good welds. It's just that some of them get dirt, some of them don't. Clean your this Amazing special effects. How do I do it? How is it done? I just don't know. How could that be done? So, here we go. Um, and you can see I have welds that are beautiful. And I have welds that are... So I have my good welds and my bad welds. Some days I can weld like it's just amazing. Some days I can't. Anyway, I show you what, what, what I do. And the bad stuff, if it's bad, I'll, I'll fix it. I won't leave it. I won't just send it away. So I really like the way these black glasses make me look. So I've got to wear them. Um, they take 10 years off of my old face. Or something. So what I've done is just I've cleaned this up. That doesn't have to be real good. Remember, this is background stuff. There are things in front of it. So this is not this is not a top finish, a top surface that I have to worry about. However, as always, welding is a real... It just does what it does. So this is this measurement, the outside of this piece and the outside of this piece, was 32 and a half, I think. Right now it's at 32 and a quarter. So not un not surprising. And you can also see here, let's see if I can get this line right, where this actually curves down a little bit. Same here. Now I know this stuff is going to happen. It's just annoying. So before I move on with this piece, I'll go ahead and straighten these two pieces out. I built this a few years ago because I just wanted to have something to, to, um, you know, to have, to have a way to, to uh, do things like this. So, what I'm doing here is that I've looked at this. It, it went out of square like it always does because it's welding, and so now I'm just getting it back into to square or at least getting it back into the, to, to the dimension it should be in. To get it back into columns, that's a good way to it. Anyway, um, I'll show you about how I'm doing this. So I pump it up a little bit. I'm just introducing a bow into it, which that will flex, but it, it allows me to put pressure on these on these points. I'll just do a quick measurement. Yeah, I want to do a little more. So I bowed it out pretty heavily. It's about a big half inch wider than than it should be. And so the only way to translate the this force and this counteracting force 
with this setup is to tap the sides a little bit and I believe that which side is you know I'll tap this side so that just allows me to it's like a force multiplier right I'm able to put the force into the system and then it, it just gives me a lot more power so now I'll go ahead and I'll drop this let this subside. What I'm trying to get is I'm trying to get this on the half inch right exactly there three two and a half so that's what I want you notice that this weld here from moving it it actually it actually opened that crack up I'm gonna leave that I just like the fact that it's tied against there I don't mind that there's a crack in there so it's I mean it's held securely it's it, it's not going to go anywhere it is so seriously held in place um, anyway so I'm liking that that's all pretty good um, where are we in tolerance now I got it got it hammered where I want it my square is pretty close which is good it's this is a tough machine because the only thing that's parallel is this and this everything else is crooked well not crooked but at, at an angle this is at an angle this is a, more of an angle as you can see and everything goes at an angle on it there's no it's in that sense in that sense it's it's difficult to put it together because you know there there's no good reference point other than the plans and the plans you know the plans actually go off of the vibrating bars so the vibrating bars are the thing that that gives the the perpendicular line to this and this line is in my parallel bars they they they're, they're somewhere like like in here they they do something like that they they actually they overhang further here than they do here anyway um, all right so i'll put this gadget up